Hi guys, David here, Almost Daily Science. So today we're gonna to talk about a new report about red light therapy and how that could improve eyesight, especially for people who are getting older in age and who are having age-related vision deterioration. According to this article, it says that red light therapy works when you expose your skin to a lamp, device, or laser with red light. A uh, part of your cells called mitochondria, sometimes called the power generators of your cells, soak it up and make more energy. I'm laughing because it's stereotypical that the, the one thing that people know about cell biology is that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, right? That's kind of stereotypical. Uh, some experts think this helps cells repair themselves and become healthier. This spurs healing in skin and muscle tissue. What's interesting is this article is kind of cautious about it. It says researchers have known about red light therapy for a while, but there aren't a lot of studies on it, and they don't know if it's better than other types of treatment used to help you heal. Uh, but it's been linked to, in one small study, people with dementia apparently had some improved uh, memories, slept better, and were angry less often. But it does point out it's, it's a small study, and it looks like, for the most part, there's just not a whole lot of like really strong data on this subject. What's interesting to me though is that kind of in the paramedical space, you could say the salon industry where people are selling tinctures and anti-aging balms and massage therapy and all this stuff. And by the way, massage therapy is great. I'm not knocking it. But the point is, is, is there's just generally speaking, maybe a lower level of rigor when it comes to people actually selling anti-aging therapies, maybe a little bit less rigor than there is sort of in the medical space. So this is interesting. This uh, red light therapy at Majestic Sun Salon is the magic eraser that zaps skincare concerns. So um, I'm curious to see this, this red light therapy could improve eyesight that has declined due to age. We'll see if this is more on the medical side of things or more on the anti-aging sales pitch side of things. So this article from NewScientist.com says that an unusual experimental treatment for fading sight involves shining a red light into the eyes for a few minutes to boost the activity of mitochondria. In the first small test of the approach in 24 people, one short exposure to the light slightly improved people's performance in tests of color vision for several days. Apparently, deep red light and near-infrared light have previously been shown to enhance the function of mitochondria in a range of cell-based and animal experiments because these wavelengths seem to work by improving the performance of key molecular structures within mitochondria called ATP synthase pumps. So to understand this, I had to dust off some of my biochemistry knowledge a little bit, and I'm, I'm hoping that I should be able to explain this in a simple way, but basically what you have here with uh, mitochondria, this is not exactly how it looks, this is a simplified schematic. You have a couple of layers, and you have this inner region, which is experiencing a change in proton concentration. And so these little uh, balls with an H plus are positively charged hydrogen atoms. And basically what they're doing is they're being pumped across a membrane to create a high concentration of proton in this outer region of the mitochondria. And this creates a concentration gradient, which basically means that through the process of osmosis, solutes like protons want to have kind of an even concentration on, on both sides of this semi-permeable membrane. And so what they're doing is basically there's a driving force, which is causing then these protons to diffuse back into the inner part of the mitochondria. And it will go through this enzyme called ATP synthase that will produce a molecule of ATP. And ATP is basically, you can think of it as like a general energy carrier. It's like an energetic molecule that can then do work throughout the cell. And so if you wanna have a healthy cell that has plenty of energy and can do its functions, then you want to have lots of ATP. And so the idea is that the red light is gonna do something to improve the function of this ATP synthase. So it says these pumps manufacture a molecule called ATP, which cells use for energy by rotating within the watery environment of the mitochondria. Deep red light has just the right wavelength at 670 nanometers to be absorbed by water molecules, which gives them more energy. This makes the water surrounding each pump less viscous, or it makes it like thinner and easier to move. And that lets the structure rotate faster. And what's interesting here, you can see in this website, you can see actually this is a molecular structure model of the ATP synthase. And it is actually, what happens is it will actually rotate as part of its ATP synthesis reaction. 
This website says that like hydroelectric turbines, ATP synthase components rotate in response to the proton flow, and this rotational energy is then coupled to ATP synthesis. And so uh, this is a pretty interesting article about it. If you want to read more, I have linked it below. So with that basic explanation out of the way, why don't we go ahead and actually dive into the research report itself. So this is from uh, nature.com in the Journal of Scientific Reports. So they found that repeated 670 nanometer exposures, so that's the red light, have been used on the aged human retina. So the human retina for people who are pretty old. Uh, and the human retina has high energy demands and significant mitochondrial and functional decline. So basically, over time, as you age, these mitochondrial functions start to decline. And the idea is that if you can stimulate ATP production, you might be able to actually improve vision. Now, it's not obvious to me if this would be a temporary improvement, because if you just, for instance, shine a red light on someone's eyes and that helps them produce a lot of ATP, I don't know if it's going to then continue to provide benefit without further exposure to red light. They say, we show here that single three minute exposures at much lower energies than previously used are sufficient to significantly improve for one week cone mediated color contrast thresholds. In other words, it improves their ability to distinguish between different colors in aging populations, 37 to 70 years old. And it improves it to levels associated with younger subjects. But what's interesting is the light needs to be delivered at specific times. So they found that if they gave the light treatment in the morning, it was effective to improve eye function, but if they gave the light in the afternoon, it didn't really have any effect. So looking at figure one, what we have here on the x-axis is the age of the subjects, and on the y-axis here is the Triton threshold percent, and that is basically a color blindness test for violet and yellow, I think distinguishing violet from yellow. So that's one of the particular colorblind tests. And what they see here is that the baseline is the black dot for each individual. And that is basically how they score on this colorblindness test before exposure to the red light. And then after they've been exposed to red light, about three hours later, they're tested and they find that they score a little lower on this test, which is a good thing. In this test, you wanna have a lower score. And what's interesting is that for almost all of the subjects, you can see that there's a slight shift down on this Triton threshold percent. In other words, there seems to be a slight improvement upon exposure to red light. And so you see here, this is the compendium here in part B, you see that the baseline level is here and there's about a 17% improvement, which isn't crazy, but that's definitely seems pretty significant. And then there's the protan threshold percent down below here, which is the red green test. And you can also see that the black dots again are the baseline. That's what how subjects scored on this test beforehand. And then the red is how they scored after the red light treatment. And you can see there's about a 12% improvement after this three minute exposure. So the first thing that I thought of when I looked at this data was first of all, 17%, 12%, those seem to be statistically significant, but I don't know for sure. And secondly, I started thinking, what other possible explanations could there be for this phenomenon? Is there some other underlying variable? And so it occurred to me, for instance, like, well, maybe this is the second time that people have taken this colorblind test, test and maybe there's a skill component to the colorblind test. But as I read on, it looks like they thought of that, which is great. So in this experiment, they took subjects and they measured their performance on these colorblindness tests and then they measured their performance on the colorblind test at a later date except they didn't expose them to red light at any point so they they tested them three hours later just like the original cohort that had had the red light treatment and what they found here is that this difference disappears you can see the black dots are the baseline and then the white squares are the tests three hours later, but these are people who didn't receive the red light. And you can see there's they're basically on top of each other. The, the difference between the performance on the colorblind tests disappears once you remove red light from the equation. So it really does look like the red light actually did improve the ability of the subjects to distinguish colors. So overall, it was found that single exposure to 670 nanometer light delivered in the morning have the ability to improve cone photoreceptor function in aged subjects to levels commonly found in much younger individuals and can be sustained for up to a week. So they came back a week later and this improvement was still there. 
So after reading through this paper, one of the things I'm curious about is just how long does this improvement in function work? Uh, so for instance, they, they found that there was some improvement even a week later, but it was a little bit less in magnitude than it was on the day that they received the red light treatment. So I'm wondering if do you do you kind of like go back to your baseline altogether after two weeks, three weeks, a month? I also wonder if maybe in the future this could be something that could be a, a daily or a weekly treatment to improve eye function. They say this simple and highly economic intervention applied at the population level will significantly impact on the quality of life in the elderly and likely result in reduced social costs that arise from problems associated with reduced vision. Exactly. I mean, I do think it would be cool if it was sort of a one and done thing. If you looked into a red light for three minutes and your eye function was improved for life. But even if it was something that you did every day, I mean, think about how great it would be to just have your medicine for your eyes be looking into a red light for a couple minutes a week instead of surgery or taking some kind of pharmaceutical compound that presumably would have some side effects. At the risk of talking down to anyone watching this video, I do want to say that I, I think it's generally speaking probably not a good idea to just implement something like this on your own. Uh, for instance, if you were to say like, well, I'm going to go get a red light and look into it to improve my eyesight, you don't really know if it's the right wavelength and you also don't know if it's too bright or not. So one of the things they looked at in this study is they worked really hard to make sure that they weren't delivering too bright of a light. So not only was the wavelength of the light, but the intensity of the light was important because you can damage your eyes by staring into bright lights. And so so I guess I wanna say, please don't try this at home, but my hope is, is that this is something, if it can be validated and our understanding of it can be expanded, I think this could be a really cool protocol in the future. Well, anyway, I hope you found this interesting or useful in some way. If you did, please go ahead and like the video and subscribe. And I hope you'll join me again in the future soon. Bye.